This is part 51 of our Minish Cap walkthrough, and we are pretty much going to load up. Oh, we get items. a lot of stuff in this part right we here. We go nuts. We get a couple of heart pieces. We finally get the payoff from the Goron quest. Yeah, the last bottle. Mm -hmm. um, Kinstone pieces. Uh, rupees, shells. Yeah, jeez. And we get one more, t an upgrade to a technique, I guess. Yeah, which is very interesting. We'll talk about that more when we get there. But yeah, yeah. He is an upgrade for the technique we just learned. But then wasn't he the only one that knew the technique in the first yeah, place? So it doesn't make a lot. I of guess sense. we will talk about it. Okay, when we're we talking get there. about it now. <laughs> <laughs> now we mentioned at the end of the last part that like we spent a ton of time in this cave that we're in, mm -hmm. and I just really wish that they would spend more time like developing like Lake Hylia area a little bit more. Instead of, like, yeah, instead of just having it be this underground cave. Lake Hylia is just really small in this game, which it I is. didn't like. And also that problem with Ocarina of Time. Like, I like the Lake Hylia and yeah. Ocarina of Time is that big. And I thought they had some interesting stuff. Like, the Temple of Droplets is in a cool spot. I like that. I like, like that. The, the Mayor's Lakeside. The cabin, that was very cool. Yeah. I just like the area, but yeah, just the lake. I mean, it needed to be bigger. And like you said, there's a lot of real estate right here. Yeah. Now, I mean, I guess you can't make a cave into a lake. It might, I mean, be under, it might be under the But, lake. you know, Zelda <laughs> Logic, they can do that probably somehow. Yeah, but it's just... I don't know. I just all the caves look the same. For the yeah, they do. Part. Well, you know, it kind of takes me back to the Fortress of Winds, which is like yeah. well, I don't really. That's the reason I don't really like it. So it, I mean, it, it is our lowest ranked dungeon from this game. Yeah, like you said, like a, a little foreshadowing on the uh, dungeon. <laughs> well, I think we already said that actually when we're in the Fortress of probably, Winds. Probably, just like probably. Like you said earlier, like the digging with the mist is just very tedious. Also, it is, and most caves aren't this big, so you don't think about it that much. Yeah, but uh -huh. man, this one. We, we spend a ton of time in. But you get a lot of stuff, though. We do. So, I mean, like, yeah, you're in here for a long time, but you get a lot of stuff. Yeah. So, and actually, right now, we're going to get that heart piece, which I like this little area because it's all enclosed. It's kind of yeah. like, how do you get here? And then finally, we found our way, I guess, whoo, man. To, to that beast. It's a tough little maze right there, to be <laughs> honest with you. No, it is really cool, though. I love this little enclosed uh -huh. area. It makes it look like it's a little clearing in the middle of the woods. Yeah. It's just a neat area. Even when I was recording this walkthrough, I wasn't sure exactly how to get there. When yeah. I saw this beanstalk first appear, I was like, like oh, well, I know yeah. I, I got to get there somewhere, but I was not exactly sure how to get there. The only thing I kind of wish would have been, because we, we love the beanstalks. I mean, I think it's yes. really cool. Well, the view. Like, the, the, view. Yeah, the view. I just wish the view from, like, when you're climbing up the four or five however many different ones there yeah. are uh -huh. would have been just a little bit different I guess when you're that high up it all you can almost just like change the color you know like yeah. uh, I don't know Lake Hylia make it like a little bit more blue well when I guess well, there's a lot of different colors right there like, yeah. too, you know for a Game Boy Advance game so. it, it's still one of the most Red, you realize that you're asking for a lot from a Game Boy Advance <laughs> game you want different colors you want different scenery I do I do I want Lake Hylia to be bigger <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> why wasn't this map bigger I know <laughs> we could have five more areas five more dungeons now, five more dungeons wouldn't have been so bad. <laughs> well, yeah, but you aren't going to get that in a handheld game. No, definitely we have, not. Well, we have six, I guess, and most handhelds only have eight. Yeah, that's true. So, that's except true. for Link Between Worlds, but that was on a lot bigger system, so they were able to do that. So. Yeah, yeah. What are we doing now? Oh, oh. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, we've, been, we've been off tangent, off topic here for a minute. I forgot what we were doing. Well, when you saw when you uh, when those Goron rocks appeared, yeah. I thought it would like pop up in your head right away. Definitely, definitely. But now I know what we're doing. Now we're finally getting the last bottle. Yeah, like, like we, I, I definitely didn't get. It I love how time. they're all standing right there. It's just like a cool little image. It is, it is, but it makes you wonder. It's like, what, what's their reward for all definitely, that? Definitely, definitely. Well, that guy on the right, after we beat the game, will actually be talking to him, and he'll be making the big Goron appear. That's right. Give us an item later on in the game. I'm not sure what the Goron. I mean, I know when the Gorons first appeared, like the last couple first appeared, they said they could smell some delicious uh -huh. rocks on the other side. Maybe uh, they went over there. Why and are ate the, some rocks? Why are the Gorons not in Mount Carnell in this game? That's a good question. But if you think about Skyward Sword, they weren't by other volcano either in Skyward Sword. Like, no. You had that one. There was only the one in the I think, the I think game, you only had, the, like, yeah, the one. In this game, you know, going with the timeline, you know, I guess it kind of makes sense. Maybe the, the Gorons haven't, like, you know, ventured to uh, the mountains yet. Yeah, I guess. Cause Rocky areas, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> because in most Zelda games, you're right. I mean, like, you think Ocarina, you think Majora's. I mean, uh -huh. it's just... Yeah, the, the Gorons are always in the mountains, but on this one, they definitely like, are. I just always forget what this is in the timeline, you know? I know. I, like, I always forget that it's right after Skyward Sword, but I mean, like I said, it makes sense. It, it does. does make sense it that does. the Gorons maybe have not ventured to the mountains yet. Now, this, we, we mentioned this a little earlier in this video. We got a little ahead of ourselves. Well, I said we were not going to talk about it, and then we talked about it. talking about for 20 seconds. Yeah. But it's interesting. He teaches us an upgrade to the Great Spin Attack, uh -huh. going back to the part 50 of our walkthrough. Um, the the ghost uh, was it Swing, Sling Blade the first? Yeah, Sling Blade, uh -huh. Said he's the only one who knew the technique. Yeah. So how can someone know how to upgrade the technique yeah. if they, if, I don't know. It so going back to the beginning of the video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this guy, he kind of tells us in a little now, funny this, way. Like, 
this just makes it longer, right? Or does it make yes. it faster, too? I, I think it's just longer. Okay. Because the first one, I think it's only like a limited burst. This one, I think you just I think it's un- I think it's unlimited. Well, I wouldn't say unlimited, because I think I tried that once, and... Yeah. But it might... Uh, just longer. Okay, it lasts just, longer. Yeah. I know we put it to good use in uh, Dark Hyrule Castle uh-huh. for too long. <laughs> like I said, it's one of the rare uh, sword techniques that we actually that I used in this game. Yeah. And and it does make you wonder why it was never implemented again. That would have been cool. Like, yeah, they have a spin attack and keep on going. That would have been really cool. Yeah. I guess Zant kind of has that in Twilight Princess. Zant d- certainly does. Now, obviously, we're not able to use that ability that Zant has. No. But <laughs> I guess, you know, you kind of relate it like that, you know, but no, that is a technique that I would like to see used in a future Zelda game. It makes me wonder who in the world taught that technique to Zant. Oh, oh man, no, we're, we're getting Sling, deep. We're, Sling, getting, we're getting deep now, if man. Sling Blade the first taught it to him too. I'm gonna be upset. <laughs> that I'd be, that's a possibility. That's a possibility. And then Swing Blade could be Lake or Lake. <laughs> Jeez, we well, you know I always knew I was gonna mess up Link's name, but I was always afraid I was gonna call him Zelda. At least you didn't Instead call him Zelda. Lake, I called him a Lake. So you know what? we're okay with that. I'm, but, I'm okay um, with that. And then, like I said, Swing Blade could also be Link from an earlier game. It could be maybe even earlier before Skyward Sword, because he knows Possibly. the sword technique. So. All I don't kinds know, of avenues, man. The, the, yeah, the, the, so makes Zelda so great. Sling Blade the First has brought up a lot of questions in our minds. Yes. <laughs> we'll probably look into it way too much. <laughs> eh, well, that's half the fun of Zelda, though. Yeah, he's probably just some like swordsmith that learned a technique and yeah. we're acting like he's you know, like, the, all, the Almighty or whatever. <laughs> he's he's <laughs> like the original. This guy's a genius. <laughs> <laughs> now, I had to laugh when uh, I saw you equip the cape when you first went into the into the garden. Uh-huh. I was like, can you jump over these guards no. with that? Oh, I was excited for well, me. Actually, you know what? I didn't try. I, I would think you could, because, like, you know what? That's a very interesting question. That I feel like if we could only rewind a video and go back and try it. I know. Dang it. <laughs> I feel like that stupid uh, rope, that snake guy, got yeah. you every time we yeah, did that. Yeah, I those snakes. <laughs> now, are we talking about jumping over the bushes or jumping over the guards? The guards. Okay, okay, because I'm pretty the sure. bushes you, we can't. Yeah, you probably couldn't jump over the bushes, but the guard is a very interesting idea. Yeah, I, th- I thought that's what you were going to try when you first equipped the cape. I don't know why I equipped it, to be honest I, with I you. I don't know either. <laughs> Must have wanted to use it at that particular point. Yep. Yeah. I'm just glad we're uh, finally cashing uh-huh. in our fourth element, element yep. here. Yeah. And we can like the fourth sword. They call it. They call it the fourth sword, actually, which I guess spawned a couple other games. Which yeah, yeah whatever. <laughs> whatever. But I mean, this is like a, just a cool scene right here. Finally, really all is. the elements coming together. You got. Uh, oh, it's called the fourth sword. I think yeah. it's the white sword, maybe. Heck, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not <laughs> sure what the names are of them. <laughs> I, I do kind of think Four Sword is, is kind of a dumb name for it. Yeah, like, I mean, it makes sense with the four elements and everything, but... I mean, like, you think, like, you know, the Master Sword, like, well, we had to have three pendants to open up, like, a gate or something yeah. like that. So, yeah. just a very different concept, so... But, I mean, yeah. I like the different, like, you know, you do want to see the Master Sword in every game. Yeah. But, you know, I kind of do like when they switched up, you know, like, you know, it's a different sword, and there's a different way of upgrading the sword, making it stronger. There is. I mean, you think back to, like, you think back to, uh... Like Skyward Sword, obviously uh-huh. it was the Goddess Sword. Yep. Here it's the Four Sword. Later on, it's the Master Sword. You know, it's yeah different. Uh-huh. Uh, different. It, it is different. It, it is, is different. Very different. I do really. Like I thought we were gonna get past this room a lot quicker than we did. <laughs> <laughs> we're still here. Listen, I know. I do like the scene that like you could finally open that door once you had the sword all the way uh-huh. upgraded, and you have that power to shoot the uh, the, the this, light beam. This, uh, or yeah, it yeah. Is. Sounds good. The peril- <laughs> no, the peril beam is like when you're in danger or whatever. Yeah, but some kind of beam. Now, how about the stained glass right here? I mean, for a 2D game, looks very I mean, that is nice. pretty good. And I like the continuation of the story we get here a little yeah. bit. It does play a little bit to the very yeah. beginning of the game. Yeah, because, like, yeah, it's the exact same thing, actually. Yeah. It's the exact same thing, and then the very last, I guess, image with uh, text that we get is yep. the only new part of this cutscene right here. That's so, right. Kind of, like I said, going back to the beginning of the game, I did really like that. It, it tied it together very well. They're continuing on the story. Yep. And this is where they tell us what happened to the Golden Light. Uh huh. Which is, of course, the big revelation that Vati has been which waiting Which is the Light for. Force? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's, yeah. It's the not Tri Force. Dude, dude, <laughs> the Life. The, the name Life Force drives me nuts in this game. I know. Because it's so close to Triforce. Yeah. You know, like, is it the Triforce? Or I don't is it, know. Or is it, uh, ugh, it's frustrating. Well, speaking it's of the Triforce, though, like on the, a couple of uh, scenes ago here in the, in the backstory, they mentioned that the hero used the power of wisdom and... Or he used wisdom and courage to uh-huh. drive out the shadow. But they don't mention power at all. And you think the three parts of the Triforce, Yeah, definitely, course. definitely. But also, you got to think historically in Zelda games... That Link has only had the Triforce of Courage. Well, Zelda usually has wisdom, and like yeah. she, since she's a stone, then maybe he like you know kind of gained that maybe. power, or maybe he had to like you know, I guess I make know. up make up for that power or something like that. Because maybe obviously wisdom wasn't in play because Zelda was stone. So or we might be overthinking it once again. Well, <laughs> you know, that's, not, that's what you're supposed to. Do. You're supposed to overthink it. Yep. 
You, uh, but it's very interesting. That, yeah, you're missing yeah. power, or that he has more than just yeah. courage. Now Vati played this perfectly. Oh, he's a genius. He, he's, he's a genius. <laughs> like wait until like what he opened like the the door or something like that to, to reveal but, no, the light force. Yeah, yeah, he was smart about waiting for Link to force a sword yep. so he could. And you would Learn think about that the life force. Link clearly learned what nothing from said. this because uh, <laughs> in Ocarina of Time, a very similar thing happens. Gandorf yes. waits for Link to open the door of time. So this version of Link did not this leave This Link need to write about it so the future Link would know not to do this. <laughs> but now that we've kind of got the rest of the story here and Vati has uh, found where the life force is, this will wrap up part 51 of the Minish Cap. <laughs>